Object-oriented programs are frequently event-driven programs. That means that they respond to something happening. For example, your word processor couldn't follow a flowchart because it doesn't know what you're going to do next. It's event-driven. If you click on bold, it reacts appropriately. If you type, it reacts appropriately. But it doesn't know what's going to happen next, so it's driven by events. Most of today's modern programming languages work with objects. Objects are a key component to event-driven programming. To create an object, you first have to create a class. Each object is a particular instance of a class. So to create an object from a class is said to be to instantiate it. We don't use traditional flowcharting or pseudocode when we're planning object-oriented programming. Instead, we use something called a class diagram. You should get an invitation from your instructor for Lucidchart, and I'm going to show you how to log into it or how to work with it. So I'm here in Lucidchart, and we're going to create a new class diagram. So I actually want to do File. I want a new document. I want it of a specific type. So I'm looking for. UML. Class diagrams are part of the unified modeling system. And it doesn't look like they've got a very simple one, so we'll just go ahead and create our own from a blank UML. We have flow charting stuff here on the side, which we don't need, containers, which we don't need, UML classes. This is what I want. This is your typical class diagram. So I'm just going to bring it out here into Lucid chart, and let's go back and look at our assignment again. Personal data, name, address, age, and phone number. Alrighty. So we're going to call it personal data. And we're going to have name. which is a string. Now the plus and minus things in front of these mean something. Minus means that it's private. Typically what you want to do in all programming languages is make your data private, but your methods to access the data public. So public items will be represented with a plus sign. So we have name, which is a string. We have address, age, and phone number. Address, which would be a string. age, which would be an int. By the way, you, this is actually not good programming because somebody's age would change every year. It's generally better in a programming environment or database environment to get their birth date and then calculate their age. And phone, which is a string because you don't add, subtract, multiply, or divide numbers in a phone number, and you might want to include hyphens and parentheses. It's considered to be a string. Now, you're also supposed to get your mutators and accessors. Those are your get and set statements. So we're going to have a plus set name plus set address plus set age and plus set phone. These are how we would call functions to change the values that we have stored in our class. We also have to have a way to get them back out. So we'd have plus get name plus get address plus get age and plus get 
phone. And that's pretty much all you need for your class diagram. So you can take a picture of it or first we're going to save it. Okay, file, publish, person data, save, and then I can do the URL, PDF, single page PDF, or image. And you can choose typically either of these is good. I'm going to do an image. I'm going to do it as a ping. I'm going to do screen view, and I'm going to publish the section. Now I have it here. In theory. And these aren't working. So let's try this again. Let's do file, publish, and let's do a single page PDF. And we'll do a PDF and publish page. And we'll see if that one's working. There we go. That's when we can download. Okay. So go ahead and publish it that way. And this is what you'll hand in as your uh, class diagram, and you'll need to do that for each program moving forward that's based on classes.